This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Moto Z2 Play. You remember the Moto Z Play? Well, this isn't the Moto Z Play 2. It's the Moto Z2 Play. They decided to do that. I don't know why. Anyway, it's the second generation of Motorola's affordable Z phone that used to be well known for its long battery life at a pretty reasonable price. We're going to find out if that still holds true now. So here it is, the second generation Moto Z Play phone. So this one is the more affordable phone in the Moto Z line compared to say Moto Z Force, phones like that. You got a metal build here, 5.5 inch AMOLED display, just like the last generation, that's 401 PPI. It's a pleasing enough display. It gets bright enough that I can see it in the sunshine and I'm in sunny Dallas. So that's a challenging place to see phones outdoors. We have the Moto style shell with wireless charging attached right now. This is a $40 Moto Mod, and there are quite a few Moto Mods to choose from, as you can see on screen right now. There's a bunch of them, and we have a few that we're going to show you as well. So they all have the little connectors here, just like the last generation phones. These maintain backward compatibility and so on, and the old ones are forward compatible, so that's how it communicates. So this one as opposed to the $20 style shell, supports wireless charging, and it does work. I just threw it on a uh, Qi wireless charger, and yep, did the job just fine. Jazzes it up. Okay, it looks maybe a little bit like grandma sheets, but it's pretty. The back, this is an improvement in my opinion. Instead of the more delicate glass back, we now have a metal back. It's aluminum, so, you know, worrying about glass breaking is no fun, especially for something that you probably will have covered all the time with some kind of style shell or mod on the back. If you don't, it's a very thin phone. In fact, it's gotten, no, oh, it's a millimeter thinner. Now the camera still sticks out. We still have that Motorola Cyclops eye going on here. 12 megapixel camera, f1.7 lens, dual tone LED flash right there. And when you take Moto Mods on and off, it's going to tell you, hey, look, you put a Moto Mod on, it'll tell you which one. And if you take it off, it's going to say, uh, is there a problem there? Or did you really mean to take that off? So we'll put that back on. Boom, it's going to vibrate. It's going to be happy. So no software to install, no drivers. It's all easy to use, which is a nice thing about the style shells and all the Moto Mods. I think that's always been a selling point for these phones. If you think the mods are cool, then you're going to like the phone. So speaking of mods, we have a couple of these in-house. This one is not released yet, the Turbo Power Pack, and that one adds a large capacity battery inside, but here it is. We've got the pre-release one, and you've got a little button to show you how much charge you've got. It's going to light up over here. It's actually pretty thin and light considering the amount of battery that you get inside. Again, 3490 milliamps of battery power inside this guy. And the JBL Sound Boost 2, we reviewed the original Sound Boost last year. The 2 is just a bit lighter and it still has around a thousand milliamps or so of power. This is a stand that pops out so you put it on the back of the phone like so and you've got stereo speakers. So there you go, you can be the life of the party. And this one's about $80. By the way, the Verizon model of this phone in the United States for carrier versions of the phone, they have the exclusive. They're throwing the original Sound Boost mod in, which is a tasteful black, <laughs> along with the purchase of the phone. So pricing on the phone, it's $408 on Verizon Wireless, which is about $10 a month, which is an interesting price right there. And the, who needs round numbers, right? And the unlocked version will be coming out this summer, it's sold direct by Motorola, and I'm sure the retailers like Best Buy who carry their stuff. And that is going to be $4.99. So that's a $50 price hike. Hmm. Not sure why that happened. There's nothing really particularly expensive and excitingly new about the phone. Now, for those of you who are in the know about Verizon and carriers in the U.S., you know that due to an agreement with the FCC or a requirement of the FCC, Verizon phones actually are unlocked. Of course, you do have to be a customer to buy them usually, so it makes it a little tricky to buy one if you're not a customer. So if you were super eager to buy one now, this is a world phone. It has GSM. It has a lot of 4G LTE A bands inside. You could do that, or you could just wait for the unlocked version of the phone. Inside, there's a 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 626 CPU. The last generation phone had the 625 CPU, so a slight improvement there. The Verizon model has 3 gigs of RAM. Uh, the unlocked version will have 4 gigs of RAM, as far as I know. That's a little interesting and weird. Maybe that's why the Verizon version is a little bit cheaper. There's 32 gigs of storage, either way. And it has a micro SD card slot in the carrier up top where the nano SIM also lives. And that's compatible with cards up to two terabytes. So for a mid-rangey kind of phone, that's a nice expandability there. Performance is upper mid-range as you would expect. And it feels very fast and very fluid when using the phone. It's 
you're not going to say, oh my goodness, why am I using such a slow old phone? No, it, it's fast. And Motorola is really good at, at that, honestly, at making a nice light Android build here. It's Android 7.1.1 and it has Google Assistant as well as Moto's new modification that allows you to say, show me while the phone is asleep and you can say, show me my next appointment, show me the weather, show me Chrome if you wanted to open up Chrome. So, and you've got your Moto Actions for various gestures here going on as well. And the Moto Voice is under here that I told you about. Moto Display is nice when it's sleeping. It just has that little display that fades in and fades out to tell you about notifications and stuff like that. And if you pick up the phone, it'll briefly show you what's on the screen or what's new in notifications and the time and the temperature. So that's still good stuff. Motorola does a nice job with that. Call quality on this is excellent. Motorola has always been a great voice phone company and this is no exception. Three microphones on board, nice call quality. Again, LTEA. So you got 4G on board, you have NFC, you have Bluetooth 4.2. 2LE and dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac and of course a GPS so well appointed there. In the front we have a 5 megapixel camera with 1.5 micron pixel sensor sights and same sensor sights for the rear 12 megapixel camera. Now the rear camera used to be 16 megapixel but they went with a lower resolution camera and that's been the trend. Samsung did that with the Galaxy series. You've noticed the iPhone isn't going with super high resolution because if you have a high resolution camera, you can capture a whole lot of garbage, more pixels worth of crap basically. So instead they're trying to improve low light photography and image quality. So I have no qualms with the resolution of the camera. It's a fast f1.7 lens. The front is f2.2. Images on the phone, well, you can see them on screen there. It has problem even with the capable HDR mode of dealing with particularly bright sunshine spots with high contrast. It's going to do some whiting out of areas. There's a little over sharpening of some detail like the foliage you can see there. Low light photography is pretty good, but you know, overall, even a, a mid-range camera phone these days is quite competent. I don't think anybody's going to say, oh, it's a terrible camera, but this is no Google Pixel XL, no Galaxy S8, no iPhone 7 Plus. There is no uh, optical image stabilization here. There is only 1080p video recording, which is likely due to the limitation of the weaker CPU that's inside. It does have dual focus pixels and laser assisted phase detection autofocus. So yeah, the battery capacity went down from last year's model, which is a shame because one of its claims to fame was the fact that the first generation Z Play had really great battery life. It had 35, 10 milliamp per hour battery. This one only has 3000. That kind of hurts. And as, as a result, Motorola's claim run times are shorter. It does support turbocharging, fast charging. You get a turbocharger in the box. It makes it through a day on a charge. I mean, after all, we have a 1080p display here and a mid-range CPU, not some killer QHD display or something like that and a fast CPU. But it's not the Energizer Bunny it once was. I suspect that Moto and Lenovo, who owns Moto's phone business now, uh, hopes that you're going to buy one of these many Moto mods that happens to have a secondary battery inside to top things up. So, yeah, that's a shame. Speaking again of the Moto mods, there's a gamepad coming later this summer. That should be kind of fun. The Hasselblad True Zoom camera add-on, that's $300. A lot of these are kind of pricey. We reviewed that last year, and you can find that if you do a search on our channel for that add-on. There's a projector, the InstaShare projector, that's $300. And there's a couple of third-party battery packs and items that you can add on there as well. Now for Verizon customers at 408 bucks, you know, this is a pretty nice phone. So if you're talking about a carrier phone and you're on Verizon, not bad at all. And the Mono Mods really are kind of fun. And like I said, it's a very fluid, fast, competent phone. I, I like the lack of user interface garbage. Of course, Verizon does put a good amount of bloatware on there. For those of you who are looking for an unlock phone, however, and you're not on Verizon, there's the OnePlus 5, which is really pretty serious competition there. And you get a much faster CPU. I think a slightly more viv vivacious display, if I can say that, a little bit more zingy and colorful looking and a slim curvy build too, and the same front facing fingerprint scanner for convenience as well, and a little bit better camera. So that kind of hurts. But again, if you're on Verizon, that's when this one becomes the most attractive. So that's the Moto Z2 Play. It's available now on Verizon Wireless in the United States, and it will be available in the coming months as an unlock phone direct from Motorola. And yeah, it went up $50 in price. The battery capacity went down. The camera resolution went down. But the camera resolution going down, like I said, is not such a bad thing. It's actually a good thing, surprisingly so. So it makes it a little bit harder to get super excited about it. But 
there's a funny thing about the Moto Z phones. I just really like them. They just feel like quality. They look like quality. They have nice, clean Android builds. The, the Moto Mods, mods software-wise, are really pretty tasteful and very useful. And the mods themselves, the things that clip on the back here, well, they're pretty cool, too albeit a little bit expensive. I suspect because most people buy phones on carrier payment plans that a lot of you are going to go for higher end phones if you're going to buy a carrier phone. So, you know, if it's $4 a month more for a Galaxy S8 or something, you might be tempted to just ignore this. And that's part of Motorola's challenge at being a carrier phone. But as an unlocked phone, it's compelling. But then the OnePlus 5 also gives it a big run for the money. It's tough. It's a tough market to be in. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.